Hey everybody, thanks for dancing with me today. I'm Laura and today I want to talk about partnered turns and rotational rock steps. thing. A rotational rock step is what sets up a good turn and allows that turn to be possible. Of course, this video wouldn't be possible if it weren't for my patrons on Patreon. Thank you so much for helping me out. If you want to join them and help videos like this be free, the link is in the description. So first we're going to talk a little bit about the way I feel partner turns, and then we're going to go into how I feel the rock steps that generate them. In order to show the partnered work, I will be helped by my husband, baby daddy, and fantastic lead, Brooks Promo. Okay, let's work on how to feel a basic turn in open position. So on a really basic level with the lead, I'm just going to try to turn and keep my hand and my body together. So a really boring, rhythmless turn in open position looks kind of like this. Wham, and we go around, and you can see as I'm turning, my hand and my body have the same distance apart. Boom. So check it out from above. And now in slow motion, you can see after we commit to the prep, the angle between my arm and my body stays pretty much the same throughout the entire turn. Come on, y'all. I am so professional. You can also see the prep that Brooks is giving me. I'm committing myself oh, completely to that prep with that same holding of my shape. Now, I see two things that are not helpful frequently. Thing number one. Wham, ha, huh. Brooks tries to turn me, my hand goes and then my body catches up. Again, check it out from above and in the slow motion, you can see after we commit to the prep, my arm goes and then my body has to catch up. So the angle between my arm and my body increases. A little more realistically, it looks like this. So obviously I can't feel the rate Brooks is asking for very well. Thing two looks like this. And our nice above angle. And in slow motion, you can see that the angle between my arm and my body decreases as I spin into my hand earlier or faster than what Brooks is asking for. Maybe that's because I'm pulling off of my partner. And maybe it's because I'm just going before Brooks asks me. But in either case, if you want to check yourself, really allow yourself to feel that end pressure and try to keep this proportion the same during the turn. If you notice one of these two things happening, just check yourself. And for the leaders, some of the things that we can focus on, first and foremost, I would say a good basic and foundation is to make our lead uh, work with the rhythm in the same timing. So if we were in like a tuck turn, we would have a rock, step, trip, step, trip, step. So each of those moments of the move and the turn coincide with the step step, the triple step, and the triple step. Obviously, as we get more experience, we can make those faster or slower on purpose, but I think that this is a good way to start, especially because it helps communicate to both of you rate of rotation. So after the rhythm, some things that we can also focus on are, as Laura was saying, kind of making sure that the followers keep an orientation with their hand and their body. We want to help them with that, meaning, I'm going to have ask for Laura's hand to be able to go around that circle. Instead of just going side to side, where it comes further out. Or the opposite side and then pushing there. So all those things, a boom, boom. Yes. And also because Brooks is such a beautiful leader, he keeps the hand at my waist level, my being the partner he's dancing with. If I'm taller, if I'm shorter, obviously that changes. You tailor it to your follow. Now let's work on that rock step. Now the tricky thing about a rotational rock step is it's pretty much exactly like a linear rock step. But we get in our heads and we think it's all turny, so we have a tendency to sort of disconnect ourselves as follows and to overdo it in a way that's not genuine to what the leader is asking for. So what are the main things that we do during linear rock steps? We step on beat, we think about our rhythm, we hold our shape 
powerfully and we continue our momentum as consistently as we can. It's all that same stuff, but rotational. If you want a refresher of what that technique looks like in a basic way, I have a basic rock steps video that'll be linked in the description. For rotational rock steps, I see three main issues. Issue number one, for that rock step, instead of continuing our momentum with all of our bodies, we have a tendency to think about how curvy it is and to pop. So we twist our hips and disconnect it from our top. Remember, I do not know necessarily that this is going to be a rock step. So just see if you can. Think about what you would do if your knee didn't catch you. Maybe you would do a little bit of a turn. Thing two, a lot of the times people disconnect their arms from the rest of their body. Whenever you encounter an endpoint, there's going to be a little bit of a squish, but see if you can keep your arm a little bit closer to you, yes? Don't let it collapse, because again, you are disconnecting your hand from the rest of your body. What you wanna do is whatever your hand feels, your body feels that same message. Thing number three, whenever people think curves, a lot of the times they think circles. That makes sense, so they keep their elbow up and they have a tendency to try to enforce the circle with a raised elbow. I try to think about everything staying down, like weights are attached to my elbow. My elbow is always, in every circumstance that I can think of, weighted down to the ground. That keeps it connected to my body, connected to my hips and to my feet, and in connected turns, away from my leader's nose. Now let's try this stuff out with the lead. So problem number one, pop. You can see, I've leaned over and I've disconnected myself from my lead. Problem number two, where you can see I've over-rotated and now I'm kind of weak. Problem number three, where you can see my elbow is up too high. The best way I know how to do it, here we go. Bam. I keep on rotating, I hold my shape, I keep my elbows down. If we put all of those things together into a tuck turn, Bam, bam, boom, boom. Now let's dance that basic tuck turn with some rhythm. I'm going to be doing the exact same thing, but it's going to look a little bit different because Brooks is going to be changing hands and doing some fancy things. <laughs> as well with the left hand, whether it's the right hand doing an inside turn, left hand doing an outside turn, whatever terminology you use, it's the exact same principle. You keep on going until you're caught, and if you're not caught, you keep on going. Also, Brooks is not trying to be sneaky about it. Every time he leaves the turn, it has that nice follow through, so it feels turny. So we have our normal outside turn, and then caught the other hand maybe. Now we're going to be doing this exact same move but making it even more fancy by adding an elbow catch on the left. Brooks said he got this move from this fantastic lead named Todd Yonakone. Check him out, Google anything that resembles his name and you'll find him. <laughs> to do the exact same stuff we've been talking about for every other move. Even complicated moves come down to their very, very simple parts. So even if Brooks is holding a part of me that is not necessarily my right hand, I'm trying to continue until I feel like I've genuinely been stopped. And then I'm trying to relax into that endpoint instead of bouncing out and redirecting myself. It's all about remembering those goals. Hold your shape. Continue your momentum. Keep that rhythm. Hold your shape. Continue your momentum. Keep that rhythm. Slow motion voice. Boom. 
The possibilities are limitless. Now let's take a look at pop turns. I think pop turns can be really tricky. For one, a lot of the times they hurt the leader's shoulders because they're having to do this thing with their elbow. And I think that is to compensate for the follower's bad technique. So let's talk about it. Spoiler, it's the exact same stuff we've been talking about, but now it's in closed position instead of an open position. So all of the stuff with keeping your hands with your body that we were talking about with the leader in open position, applies to closed position, but as follows, a lot of the times we let our arms go because we don't want to apply pressure to the leader. Keep in mind, your leader needs that pressure in order to lead the pop turn. That is what generates the pop, is our relationship to our own bodies. So keep your left arm with your body. As that rock step opens up, try to keep your arm with you. Let's check it out with the lead. As we open up for that rock step in that same rhythmless, boring way, I open up and as I open up, pressure builds up between Brooks's back and my arm and his arm and my back. And it's not because I'm pushing on Brooks or trying to do, <laughs> trying to get pressure to happen. It's because as I open up, my arm just comes with me and I don't wanna leave my arm behind because Brooks needs that to lead it. He's relying on it. Yeah. So, a pop turn would look like this. You want to talk about what you're doing? So, I'm thinking of it as just a regular inside turn, six counts. And then by having Laura hold her shape there, it allows me to work with it. Um, so as Laura showed me, instead of kind of working this for my elbow, I've got here and then I can think about moving back into it mm -hmm. you know, and using that as the turn. And it makes it really easy to get a snappy turn together. That said, it's not always a snappy turn and it's not always in the same direction. So always be available for the many manifestations of what this turn could be. group of rock steps, we just want to talk about post-turn rock steps. By that, I mean you've just turned, uh, and you're going to have a rock step for the catch after the turn. A lot of the times, I see follows turn, and then after the turn, there's this moment of whew, nailed it, and you have a return to that oversized straight rock step, so it's not reminiscent of the momentum we just had. Just like all of this stuff we've been talking about, keep the same momentum you just had. Stay in that moment. So from a partnered sense, it's all that same stuff we've been talking about. You just keep on going until you feel like you've been stopped or until logically it doesn't make sense to go anymore with your own human brain. So from a tuck turn in place, what I see a lot, look at that last rock step as it looks like this. And So notice that last rock step is big and straight because I've finished turning and it's done. So keep in mind, we want to keep that same flavor going into the rock step because that's what Brooks is expecting. That's what he set up. That's what he's going to use to do something else that's brilliant. So it looks more like this. Bam. 
that I did before instead of what I see a lot is this Bang. down the line I made it notice that the rock step after that turn has some problems it's straight it's big and I've stopped my own momentum which means that Brooks and I don't have the ability to do anything else we have no other options an example of another option that I really like. This is an old gem that Brooks used to do all the time. Yeah. Here we go. So obviously, rather than doing the rock step, he just continues it around. We know that the rhythm going into close position was different. Don't worry about that unless you want to figure it out. So of course there's also the option of Brooks taking away that curve because he wants to go into something linear. So if we take that tuck turn in place again, if he stays close to me, bam, I'm gonna continue around with that curvy rock step, just like we've been talking about. However, if Brooks backs up because he wants to go into a swing out or something like that, it might look like this. Bam, bam, bam. And from our aerial shot, you can see that as soon as my hand clears my head, wham, Brooks backs up and creates that line with his body. And you can see when he backs up, it creates that linear tension. I get ready because it feels like swivel time, and indeed it is. And then there's no more curvy rock step. It's a straight line after that. to my philosophy of dance. Try it on, see how it works for you, and if it doesn't work for you, again, ditch it. Also, another note, don't let this technique take your dancing away from you. Your dancing is the most important thing you bring to the dance floor. I hope this video was helpful. If you like the music, the link to the artist and where to buy it is going to be in the description. If you enjoyed it, click like and subscribe. The YouTube algorithm loves it when you do that stuff. And then head on over to my Patreon and you can help videos like this be free for everyone in the world. Remember, the best way to learn how to do all this stuff is just to do it again and again. Just dance and dance and dance.